Kentucky at Eastern Illinois. The winner of that will go to the playoffs. The loser will stay home. That game for that championship, very similar to this one here. We had Michigan leading Ohio State 13 to nothing. The other undefeated 1As have Florida State at Florida today. That'll start at 3.30 Eastern time. And uh, I'm looking for Nebraska. It looks like maybe the Cornhuskers are not in action this afternoon. So Colgate's going to get the football first. They're going to deploy for the first time today with some uh, pretty clean uniforms. Randall Joseph on the far side and uh, R.J. Gregory on the near side for the Colgate Red Raiders. Actually, that's not Gregory as he turns around. It's Matt DiGiulio. So two guys that have not played much because their uniforms are extremely clean here in the ball game. 27-7, Colgate in front. Glad you're with us on the Bison Sports Network. That's WMLP, Milton Lewisburg, and WWPA in Williamsport. Again tonight on WVLY and WWPA, Bucknell basketball, 5-10 for Bucknell and Brown. Chris Carlin, Pat Farabaugh on the call with that one. Been a rough couple of days. Bucknell basketball last night at Hostra. Bucknell football here today at Colgate. Coleman kicks off high end over end. The Julio will run up and get it on the 20. Come to the middle of the field to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. Still going to the 45 to midfield. Down the right sideline to the 40. Breaks a couple of more tackles and gets inside the 35 yard line to the 33 yard line. A 47 yard return from the 20 yard line out to the 33 and Colgate in business with a great kick return and a touchdown here just might about seal it as they're up by 20, 27-7. The last time they got Bucknell, uh, got Bucknell with the ball down in the Bucknell territory, they went for the jugular, went for the bomb early. We'll see if it happens again here on this drive. Great kick return by DeJulia. Benna hands it to the first back through, that's Damon Smith. He'll go from the 33 to the 30, gain of three, second and seven. So Colgate with a first chance to score. Remember Bucknell had the first chance in the first half and the momentum swinger. The Bison were unable to convert a field goal. Bad hold on Don McDowell's part and the Red Raiders were able to stop the option to Ross Coleman. And ever since they scored Four unanswered touchdowns. Bucknell scored their only touchdown on a Hail Mary on the last play of the first half. Opening moments, quarter number three, 27-7 in favor of Colgate. Benna, two-step drop, kind of shot puts the ball out to the right side to Gregory. He'll catch the ball short of the first down marker. Maybe Terrence Parham on the tackle for the Bison over there on the right side. Again, the Bison with the white uniforms, very, very difficult to see who is who over there. It was whoever was playing the right corner. It may have been uh, Lebrecht on the tackle, or maybe even Dan Palco, who's over there, and it is Palco going out there. So third guess is right for me. Thanks to Rob Maher, our statistician in the booth, doing a great job here this afternoon. Hand off to Ed Weiss. Ed Weiss up the middle as the Bison have had trouble tackling up the middle as the running backs for Colgate continue to chew up yardage. Weiss went over 1,000 earlier in the ball game. He now has 57 yards on the day as he picked up eight there, 12 carries for Weiss. Bison will bring Eric Green out of the game. Mark Imbertson will come out as well. So Colgate now with a second down and two after the eight-yard run to the 15. Hill to the left, Gregory to the right. They'll line up in the eye, Smith and Weiss. We've seen Smith a little bit of tail. Weiss only plays tail. They'll hand the ball to Weiss, and that time, no blocking. He'll lose two yards. Stonewalled by the middle of the Bucknell defense. May have been John Papadakis, the nose guard, who was in there for Eric Green. And also the strong safety, Sean Thompson, in there. So now it's third down and five to go for a first down. 12.50 remaining in the quarter. Third quarter, 27-7 Colgate. Bison have to come up with a stop here as they can't see this lead for Colgate grow more than three touchdowns. Third down and long. Benna optioning right, flips it to Weiss. Weiss around the corner, has the first down. It'll be very close. The spot will be crucial. And we'll see whether he has it. Our booth thinks they've got it. More importantly, the man in the white hat, the referee, thinks they have it. First down for Colgate. So they'll have it in the red zone. First down at the Bucknell 12-yard line, maybe down to the 11. Josh Lebrecht back into the game for the Bison. First and 10. And another mud cake player will come out. 
That's Josh. Actually, I thought Josh Lebrecht had come out. Maybe he's the guy that came out and somebody else came in. First and 10, Colgate. Hill in motion. Vena tosses short side to Weiss. Following a block to the 10, to the 5. He'll be bumped out at the 2. Good pulling block by the left guard, Luke George. Got out in front of Ed Weiss. And Colgate has it inside the 5 yard line, down at about the 3 or the 2 yard line. Weiss are going to run their goal line defense in there as Colgate with a big open opening kickoff of the second half. It set them up on the 33 yard line. This is going to be a shortened field if they're able to punch it in. Second down goal. Second down and they're just inches. Actually second and inches because the ball was spotted at the two yard line. The first down markers at the two. Backs in and I, double tight ends. Ben will hand the ball to Smith over the left side. He'll get to the one and then get pushed back. Justin Lustig there, Terrence Parham and a couple of others. Referee got knocked down in the melee as well. And there are a couple of Bison slow to their feet. One of them was Tom Farrell. Like and now another Bison is on his knees and they'll stop the clock with 11.44 remaining. Steve Zinder and company will come out and attend to, looks like Wally Hurdley is gonna come off the field. Hurdley, one of the senior captains on this team. He was elected in a vote of teammates by the squad on Sunday night. Steve Varga will come into the game for Hurdley. It was Hurdley, Hunter Adams, and Chris Peer. And as Tom Gadd said in the pregame show, 15 different seniors out of 20 got votes for captain. And that's amazing. It's been a great senior class. Double tight ends for Colgate. The ball back at the four. It's third down, and we'll call it a yard and a half for a first down. Backs in an eye. Hill in motion. They'll hand the ball to Smith. No, it's a play fake. Venna will roll to the right side. Ryan will scramble, and he'll dive for the goal line, and he's in. And it's 33 to seven in favor of Colgate on a four yard run by Ryan Venna. And for Venna today, it's his first rushing touchdown. And the scrambler that he is has now rushed this season for seven touchdowns. And that ties Don McDowell for most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in the Patriot League. Score comes with 11-24 to go in the third. And Federico, who is three out of four today on extra points, will try it again. Holding will be the backup quarterback, Matt Polycare. High snap, and they're going to run it. Polycare will try to run it in, and he'll make it. So Colgate will get the two-point conversion and go up 35-7. to seven. It almost looked like it was a planned play. The snap was a little high, and Polycare was coming out of his stance very quickly, so maybe it was a fake. 35-7 Red Raiders. Let's take time out. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Wenn ihr merken würde, dass euer Aussehen schlecht ist, dass das der anderen jungen Leute eures Alters so recht ist, das sprach dann die Lieder, die Oberste Temmerab über Daniel, Hanania, Michael und Asaria gesetzt hatte. Versuch's doch mit deinen Knechten, zehn Tage, und lass uns genießen. Bison now down 35 to seven to Colgate as we play the third quarter, 11-24 remaining. Kuchke's gonna kick off, Perkins near side, Parham far side as the Bison return men stand at the five yard line. Game very reminiscent of a Super Bowl and unfortunately I hate to say it, but Tom Gowd is fairly prophetic in the pregame saying the first break of the game many times that team just steamrolls from there and that's happened. Bucknell couldn't get a field goal 
After a first and goal at the four, short kick fielded on the run at the 22 by Parham. Come to the 25, to the near side, to the 30, and he is going to be ankle tackled at the 33-yard line by Sean Cannon, a reserve defensive back. Got him by the ankle and wouldn't let him go. Eight play, 33-yard drive for Colgate, capped on the four-yard option run by Ryan Venna, and then the two-point conversion on the fake two-point, uh, excuse me, fake kick. The holder, Matt Polycare, picked it up and ran it in straight up the middle. So it's 35-7. It's been all Colgate except for that one Hail Mary right at the end of the first half. McDowell quarterback, Bucknell's first drive. They give the ball to Bombick on the little trap and nothing doing. In fact, he will probably lose a yard. Blair Hicks there for Colgate on the stop. Red Raiders have this season given up 342 yards a game and 24 points. They were to give up 24 points today. The Red Raiders would have enough. They've been averaging this season 34 points. They're right about their average. They have 35 that they've put on the board thus far. Second down and 11. Out of the shotgun, McDowell faces a four-man rush. They throw that little flanker inside pass to Rocket, who catches it behind the line, and then five and Maroon jump on him. Gomez is the first there. Also there is Domiancic and Zaleski, and that was a pass in the first half that went for 26 yards. Rocket caught it in the middle and veered to the outside, but this time it's a loss of one. And the Red Raiders now have Bucknell in the hole at third down and 11. We take a look at... Uh, some other scores, Villanova trying to make a game of it with Northeastern. They're down 14 to 10 midway through the second quarter. Boston U's last football game looks like it's gonna be a loss. James Madison leads 17 to nothing. Third down and 11, out of the shotgun. McDowell back to pass, has plenty of time. Throws it over the middle, tipped out of the way by the defensive back, Brandon Tinson. It was intended at the 43 for Artie Kissing. There would have been first down yardage, but it's incomplete and on Bucknell's first drive of the second half, it'll be three and out, and Brian Kramer will come on to punt. Michigan continues to lead Ohio State 13 to nothing in the third. Tennessee with a dog fight, 24-21. The Kentucky Wildcats trail in Lexington right before the half. Fourth down and 11. Kramer to punt, single safety is Jesse Boyd. Nice pass from center by Wilcox, Colgate, token rush. Kramer who had a big kick earlier in the first half, kicks it to Boyd, takes it at the 37, gets to the 40, to midfield, into Bucknell territory, still on his feet, and he'll get to the 46-yard line. It'll be a return of about 14 for Jesse Boyd on the punt, 34 yards for Brian Kramer, which is about his average. So Colgate will start on the plus side of midfield. They've done that twice, and both times they've scored touchdowns, a 28-yard drive and a 33-yard drive. This time they'll take over on the 46. And they've had about three long drives as well. 9.36 remaining, 35-7 in favor of Colgate. They'll hand the ball to the tail back this time at Smith. Smith carrying tacklers with him inside the 40 to the 39. It'll be a pickup of seven. And Colgate right now just uh, running between the tackles and running very, very effectively. Smith is probably gonna come up short of his thousand yard goal he needed 143 before the game. He now has carried the ball 14 times for 45 yards. That time again got seven to the 39-yard line. Damon Smith along with Jamal Patterson, the strong safety, and defensive end Blair Hicks all were injured earlier in their career and played as a fifth-year senior. And those three were the core of this Colgate team. And their leadership and their experience have been one of the reasons why the Red Raiders right now look like they're in verge of their first Patriot League championship. Smith will carry for another yard or two in the middle before he's knocked back, and Colgate will have a third and short. Bucknell, of course, won the championship last year for their first Patriot League championship. Colgate, along with Fordham, a team that has never won. Holy Cross, of course, started out like gangbusters with their scholarships early in the first part of this 12 years now that the Patriot League has been going. Lafayette's won a couple of times. Lehigh's been in there for a couple. Bucknell won last year. 8-19 and counting to go in the third quarter. 35-7 in favor of Colgate. Gregory to the right, Hill to the left. 
Third down, we'll call it a long two. Backs in an eye for the Red Raiders. Venna under center. Six-man line for the Bison. Venna on the option, right side to Weiss for the 40. A lot of running room. 35-30 down the sidelines. He'll be bumped out at about the 26-yard line. A gain of about 12 on the play. And the Bison bump him out. May have been Willie Hill that was over there. And the Red Raiders now with a first and 10 at the 26 yard line, 92 yards now on the day for Ed Weiss. And the clock stopped as Weiss got bumped out of bounds. Weiss last year was the leading rusher on the JV team for Colgate, 69 carries for 513 yards, eight touchdowns. Benna rolling left side, hit as he throws, throws it downfield, it's incomplete. Intended for Hill at the 10. Parham had coverage, and the Bison were able to lower the boom on Venna, one of the few knockdowns they've had today. So now it'll be second down and 10 for the Red Raiders at the Bison 26-yard line. Venna on the day has now completed 8 of 14 for 138 yards, but again, three touchdowns and no interceptions. Again, the winner of this game to the NCAA tournament next week. Most people expect it to be at Villanova, especially if they're to hang on, but they're losing right now, 14 to 10. Benna will hand the ball to Smith. Smith straight up the middle, gets inside the 25 to the 23, so it'll leave a third down and about seven to go for the Red Raiders. On the tackle for the Bison that time may have been Steve Berman, the outside linebacker. So now a third and seven coming up for the Red Raiders. Fresh uniform in there for Colgate in the running back position. That's Jared Bowers. He's been in there a couple of plays. Venna will go out of the shotgun. On the pass from center, gives it off on the draw to Smith. Smith inside the 20, lowers his shoulder, fights towards the 15. He'll be close to a first down. They needed to get between the 16 and the 15 for a first down. They may have to measure. Now the officials are going to say it's fourth down. Okay, the ball is being spotted on the middle of the Bison defense. It was Mark Imbertson that made the stop. Steve Berman was also there. So it's fourth and one, and Colgate is going to bring some extra running backs and tight ends into the game, and they're going to go for it with 6.38 and counting in the third quarter. They already lead it 35-7. to seven. Ball outside the 16, they need to get close to the 15 for a first down. Smith, shaded to the left. Venna will option left, he's got the first down, dives inside the 15 to the 13. Venna looked like in close quarters, had no interest in optioning. And it'll be first down, Red Raiders inside the 15 at the 13. Benna last year was the MVP in the Patriot League in addition to being the Rookie of the Year, and only three times in the history of college football has the same player won the Rookie of the Year and the MVP in his league ever. And they're two pretty good names, Stanford Jennings, a running back from Furman, and Herschel Walker, a running back at Georgia. First down and 10 at the 13. Benna will hand the ball to Smith, Smith up the middle, and he'll be stacked up after maybe a gain of one to the 12, and about four Bison jump on him and push him back. Sean Thompson in there, Steve Pratico in there as well for the Bison, and Willie Hill making the stop, so Colgate gains one, and it'll be second and nine. Down to five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Colgate. Scored four unanswered touchdowns from 233 to go in the first quarter to 743 to go in the second quarter. So it was about a 10 minute span where they really dominated and put this one out of reach. Then a quick handoff to Smith. Smith high steps his way into the secondary. Will get down to the five, close to first down yardage. And the Red Raiders just pushing Bucknell's defense out of the way. Very close to first down yardage. They're going to say it's a third down coming up. Josh Lebrecht on the tackle. Sean Thompson also there again. Bison will bring some new faces back on defense. Not fresh uniforms. Bison with mud from head to toe. 
Third down and one for Colgate. They'll line up in an eye and put Smith at the tailback. Then will give the ball to the first back through. That's the fullback. That's Owens. He'll be down to the one, and now they'll say he's in for the score. And Colgate has scored again on Brian Owens, his fourth touchdown of the season. And they're in for the score with 4.27 remaining. It's now 41-7 in favor of the Red Raiders. So Owens on a four-yard run. Colgate has run the ball down for two touchdowns in this half. And the Red Raiders appear that they are going to steamroll their way into the NCAA tournament and up their record to 7-4 and four with two losses against 1A teams. Federico's kick is up, and the kick is good. We've got another break in the action. It is Colgate 42 and Bucknell 7. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Entfaltet sie Leben und das Universum als immer gegen Psalm. Meine Seele soll sich rühmen des Herrn, dass es die Elenden hören und sich freuen. Der Herr ist mein Gut, mein Teil. Du erhältst mein Erbteil. Das Lob ist mir gefallen auf dem Land. Colgate's lowest scoring total of the season was seven in their opening game against Richmond. Richmond beat them 23 to seven. But since then, the lowest points they've put on the board has been 24 points last week against Navy. They've racked up 42 here. Lead Bucknell 42 to 7 in the Patriot League Championship game with 4.27 remaining. Kuchki's kick is low, line driving. It'll bounce at the 15, be taken there by Perkins, follows Parham, gets to the 20 to the sidelines, and he's going to be forced out of bounds at about the 27-yard line, which is where Bucknell will take over first and 10. Been a tough afternoon for the Bison. They got the opening kickoff, if you missed it, marched it right down the field, a 16-yard scramble by McDowell to convert a third and long, and a 42-yard scamper by Chris Peer down to the four. Then they got stuffed three plays in a row, tried a field goal, McDowell bobbled the hold, and ever since then, the onslaught has been on for Colgate. And the Bison now just looking to put some points on the board. Their only score came on a Hail Mary at the end of the half. McDowell to Kissinger for 36 yards. First and 10, out of the shotgun, McDowell looks downfield, throws it underneath, out of the backfield, that may be Peer. A flag is down back at the quarterback. They may have hit Neil Gomez with a roughing the passer call. Peer with the catch, the gain will be seven, and if it is roughing the passer, that would be added on. We'll see what the call is gonna be. Flag is back at the 20-yard line. Bucknell has not retreated. Ball being taken to the line of scrimmage at the 33, which would have been, again, the gain of about seven to Pier. And it looks like it's going to be added on. So our guest with roughing the passer with the flag dropped at the foot of Neil Gomez is going to give Bucknell one of its larger plays of the day. Pierce 42-yard gain number one, the number two play, the 36-yard pass to Kissinger and that 15 yards might be number three on the day. So the Bison with a chance here as they get the ball moved up near midfield at the 48 their own. They may be going shotgun exclusively down 42 to seven. Nice pass from center. Looking downfield, throwing the ball on the money, leaping catch for Artie Kissinger at the 36. It'll be a gain of 17. Kissinger had position, took it away from the defensive back Boyd, and the Bison have marched it down to the 36 of Colgate on two passes and a penalty. McDowell now nine of, excuse me, eight of 16, exactly 50%, just shy of 100 yards at 96. Kissinger to the left, Lima and Rocket to the right. Back side by side next to McDowell. They'll play without a tight end. Out of the shotgun again. 
McDowell back to pass, throws the ball on the money again. It's caught by Kissinger again, out of bounds. First down at the 24 of Colgate, a gain of 11. Colgate right now looks like they're in a little bit of a prevent defense. They have given Kissinger and Peer on the three catches on this drive as McDowell three for three on the drive. Giving them room up front, not wanting to get beat deep, and all of a sudden Bucknell has marched it down to the 25 officially of Colgate. First and 10. They'll still wing it out of the shotgun. Backs flank him. McDowell sends everybody into the pattern. Hit as he throws, throws it in the flat. It's in and out of the hands of Myers. Karimski had coverage there. Blair Hicks, the senior, fifth year defensive end, 6'2", 233, lowered the boom on McDowell. It's his third year starting. First team all Patriot League last year for Blair Hicks. So now it's second and 10, and Paul Lima will come back into the game clock. Stop 327 remaining in the third quarter. The Bison are down 42 to seven. That's five touchdowns. Rocket to the right with Lima, kissing her to the left. This time McDowell under center. Colgate shows a four-man line. McDowell, couple step drop, looks left side. Now pulls back, throws right side, and overthrows Lima. He was pressured in the middle. Boyd and Karimski were all over Lima. He didn't have much room, and McDowell was lucky he overthrew it. Defensively for the Red Raiders, Duvorn Harris was in his face and forced him to throw it too soon. So the Bison now have to convert a third and 10. And on the afternoon, the Bison on third downs, not very good at one out of eight. Third down and 10. McDowell out of the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket. Now will throw it on the run, throws it over the middle. It's incomplete. Ball intended for Kissinger. Herman, the safety on the coverage with the cornerback, Zanet. And he'll bring up fourth down and down 42 to seven. Bucknell has no choice but to leave the offense on the field. Corey Hurley at tight end will come back into the game for the Bison. He'll replace Paul Lima, so Bucknell will play with at least one tight end. Again, basketball comes up at 5'10", Bucknell and Brown. Remember, for those of you in the Lewisburg area, you have to switch over to the FM side of the dial to the Valley, 100.9 FM. Fourth and 10 for Bucknell from the Colgate 25-yard line. They'll move Hurley from the left to the right as the tight end. Twin set to the right. McDowell rolling out right. Gets a block from behind. Throws it downfield. It's intercepted by Brandon Tinson. Second turnover of the game for the Bison. And Colgate will take over on their own 27-yard line. And that comes with 3-13 remaining in the third quarter. So the Bison on fourth down, McDowell had to make a play, try to force it in there, and it doesn't go. Tinson, a sophomore, who was Patriot League Rookie of the Week against Holy Cross, intercepts for the fourth time this season for Colgate. So now it's first and 10 Red Raiders going the other way at the 28. Bennett rolling right, looking to throw. Flips it out in the flat, and it's caught by Hill for a first down. Lutz Tacklers gets out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Gain of 18 to Corey Hill. And the sticks will move, and Venna doesn't throw a pretty ball. It almost looks like he's shotgunning him. Sean Thompson on the tackle for the Bison. So it's first and 10 Red Raiders. And Venna continues to get the job done with clutch passing. Nine out of 15 today, up to 152 yards. And again, the statistics don't look great, but three touchdowns, no interceptions. They go back to the run to Smith. Smith will go over the right side across the 45 to about the 47, about three or four more. And Colgate right now, I think, would just be content with moving the ball, keeping the ball inbounds. I don't think they did at that time as the clock stops with 2.44 left. After a gain of now with they'll mark four, and it's been a long afternoon for the Bison defense as they've been on the field a lot this afternoon. Second down and six for the Red Raiders at the 47 yard line, their own. This is something I did not expect. I thought Bucknell was gonna win the game and I thought it was gonna be certainly a close game. Bennett going back to pass, throwing it out for Hill. The ball is caught and there's a thousand for the season and more. 
inside the 40 to the 35 yard line, a gain of 18 more, and Corey Hill has now tied the season record with 67 catches, as that's his seventh catch of the day. He needs one more for the school record of 68, and Corey Hill has been good as advertised, a three-year starter as a junior. Last year had two touchdown catches against Bucknell, in a total of five catches for 99 yards. He's now caught a pass in 31 straight games and is over 2,000 yards for his career. And he, of course, has two of the touchdowns again this afternoon. First and 10 Red Raiders from the 34. Benna will hand the ball to the second back through. And we'll call it Smith for a couple. And now some extracurricular pushing and shoving by Damon Smith, who doesn't like something that was said by Willie Hill. And now some of the linemen for both teams get between Hill and Smith. Steve Berman trying to be a peacemaker out there for the Bison. Gain of maybe a yard. Second down and nine coming up for Colgate. Minute 45 to go in the third quarter. Harvard leading Yale at the half, 14-0. They're trying to get the Ivy League championship this afternoon. That Ohio Valley game for their championship in 1AA, Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Illinois, just kicked off about now. Second down and nine for Colgate. Backs in an eye, receiver each side. Venna, back to pass. Little screen, right side. There's the record for Hill. Eight catches, 68 on the season. He'll gain a short four, maybe five yards and lead him with third and four coming up from the Bucknell 29. 68 catches for Corey Hill. All-time record at Colgate, and he's back for another year. Venna will be back, and so will the tailback, Ed Weiss, who's just a sophomore. Three of their offensive linemen, the two blockers on the left side and the center, will all be back as well offensively next year for Colgate. And the Red Raiders now with third and five, and as we look at their third down conversions on the day, a very, very good six out of 12, so they have been able to sustain things here this afternoon. 38 seconds to go in a third quarter that has been dominated by Colgate. Bannon of the second back through will not get the first down. That time it may have been Weiss. And we'll see if Colgate will go for it again or not. They're gonna let the clock run out in the third quarter and think about it and begin the fourth quarter with a fourth down and a long two to go for a first down. The Red Raiders head to the fourth quarter with the champagne on ice right now. It's 42 to seven. They lead Bucknell. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Um, von Gott geführt wurde und dass er nie von Gott getrennt war und dass Gott immer die Herrschaft hatte, dass er aus, aus jeder Situation herausgeführt wurde. Ich muss mir irgendwie so ja, Josef vorstellen, wie so eine Gummiente, die man in einer Badewanne hat und die kann man unter Wasser drücken oder schief halten. Also die kommt immer wieder an die Oberfläche. Ja. Und, ja. Also er hat so wirklich so viele, äh, ja, wie du sagst, Ungerechtigkeiten erlebt in seinem Leben. Aber das konnte ihn alles nicht umwerfen. Mhm. Er wurde dann... Fifteen minutes to go. The Red Raiders of Colgate leading by the score of 42 to 7. They added 14 in the third quarter. And the Bison did not score. And they have a fourth down and a long two here to go for the first down. The deep back is Weiss. Smith will be the fullback. Venna will come under center. One receiver to each side. Venna gives it off to Smith. The first back through, first down and more. He'll get to the 20. It'll be a pickup of seven. And again, great blocking in the middle. Kevin Bolas, the center, and the guards, Luke George and Fred Monfit. The two guards for Colgate, absolutely enormous. Both 6'2". George goes 300, and Monfit goes 283. And they have pretty much had their way with the Bison up front in the middle of the line this afternoon. 42 to seven in favor of the Red Raiders. Hill to the left side, the all-time single season receiver for Colgate. 
over 1,000 total yards, also with 68 catches, Colgate record. Venna will go back to pass, step up in the pocket, throw it over the middle, the ball caught and dropped. I believe it's going to be ruled incomplete, as the intended receiver never had it. It may have been Gregory that was the intended receiver for Colgate and probably tried to run with it before he had it. May have been the tight end Ernie Quackenbush too out there that had it in the middle. So it's incomplete, second and 10 coming up for the Red Raiders. And it was Quackenbush, it was not Gregory because Gregory's coming off the field, on the field right now. And Quackenbush is coming off. If you're just joining us, 42 to seven, Colgate leading. And momentum swung very early in the first quarter with 11 and a half minutes to go. Bison were inside the four, got stonewalled and had a bad hold on a field goal try. Venna will option, keep it himself and maybe get a yard. Looked like he wanted to give the ball off to the first back through but missed the handoff and then ended up paying the price. Bottom of the pile for the Bucknell Bison was Steve Pratico. Big feature story on Steve in the Sunbury Daily Item yesterday. And of course, Steve very happy with his decision. Transferring from a Rutgers team that did not win a game three years ago. Actually, the team did not win a game this year. And with Bucknell this season, a team that apparently is going to finish 10 and 1. Third down and nine for Colgate. From just outside the 20, Venna will operate out of the shotgun. Bobbles the snap, but catches it. Hit as he throws, throws it out there to Hill. Ball caught at the five. Nate Musselman will bring him down at the two. It's a gain of 18, and the Red Raiders will have a first and goal. Venna got hit as he threw. It might have been Eric Green that was in his face, but nonetheless, Venna able to hang in there and get up the hill. That's nine catches on the day for Corey Hill. And it's first and goal, Red Raiders at the two. Hill now nine catches for 137 yards. And we'll check what the single game record is for Colgate when we have a moment. They have it first and goal at the two yard line. And the single game record is 10, actually 11. They'll hand the ball in the middle of the field and they'll get maybe to the one with whoever's carrying and the surge on the uh, scrum at middle field is gonna be stopped, it looks like, short of the goal line. They'll unpile. It'll be right there. 11 catches is the most. Tom Rogers against Syracuse in 81 and David Lake against Rutgers in 74. The yardage record is 223 by George Delaney on 10 catches in 1988. So he'll probably with more of a chance at the total record, not the yardage record, as he's gonna need about 100 more yards to go for that. 12 and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. Smith in front of Weiss in the eye. Fenna under center. And he'll hand the ball to Smith, and Smith will be stacked up. In fact, will lose the yard. Great penetration by a Bucknell defensive line that hang in there under tough conditions. Looks like Hunter Adams and maybe Willie Hill was in there. Getting very difficult to spot these bison as their uniforms are totally covered with mud. So Colgate now will have the ball go back out to about the three yard line where it's third and goal from there. Then under center. Benna hands the ball, second back through. That's Smith, he's up and over for the score. And it's now 48 to seven in favor of the Red Raiders. And that comes with 11.29 to go in the ball game. And for Smith, that's his second touchdown run of the game. His 15th rushing touchdown of the season and it is his 32nd of his career. And Federico will be out to try the extra point again to give the Red Raiders their 49th point in the afternoon. And this time they'll kick it, and the ball's gonna be off to the side, a terrible kick, so Colgate will lead by the score of 48 to seven. We've got another break in the action. 11.29 to go in the game. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Yeah. 
11 minutes and 29 seconds to go in the football game. 48 to 7 in favor of Colgate. Red Raiders came into the game minus 11 on turnovers. They forced two. Bucknell came in plus 15 and haven't forced any this afternoon. And the Red Raiders right now leaving their first team offense in and throwing the football have really run the score up to 48 to 7. Ball bouncing, picked up by Perkins on about the 15. Come up to the 20, to the 30, and out to the 35-yard line. On the tackle for Colgate was Ahmad Russell, a backup safety for Colgate. And Bucknell will get the football starting at about its own 35-yard line. This game this afternoon, very reminiscent of Super Bowls, where one team has gotten ahead, and it's been a snoozer. Kissing her to the left. He's got Bucknell's lone touchdown on a 36-yard Hail Mary at the end of the half. McDowell out of the shotgun. McDowell back to pass. First teamers in there for both teams. Throws the ball over the middle for first down yardage. Zaleski on the tackle with help from Domiancic. It goes to Kissinger, who has been Bucknell's leading receiver this afternoon. That'll be his uh, fourth catch on the afternoon. And Bucknell's going to operate without a huddle here. Again, McDowell out of the shotgun. Four-man line for Colgate. Back to pass. Given time. Now Hicks hits him as he throws and forces a pass that goes into the turf incomplete. Hicks came from the blind side. And it's going to be second and ten after the incompletion. So we look back at this season. What a season for the Bison. Got the 24th in the nation. Probably should have been higher. Currently ranked 12th in the Sagarin ratings. And what enjoyment they brought their fans this season, uh, pulling out a tie game in the first game against Duquesne, pulling one out from behind against Lafayette, playing a great first half against Penn, storming back and impressively beating Ivy League champion Harvard. Those are just the first four games. Second and 10, McDowell out of the shotgun, faces a middle blitz now, scrambles to the right side, throws it downfield for Lima, who makes a sliding catch, but he's out of bounds. Would have been to the 34-yard line. Great effort by Lima to make the catch. It'll be third and 10 after the incompletion. Then held on at Yale on a, a game when the Bison were a little bit down, but defense was able to hunker down and stop a two-point conversion. Then play really good football on the stretch of pay, pounding Fordham. Holy Cross, Lehigh, and then going out and winning the shootout at St. Mary's in last week with a very business-like shutout, 33 to nothing against Towson. But here this afternoon, at least, it has not been Bucknell's afternoon. They trail at 48 to seven. Third down and 10, McDowell out of the shotgun. He's gonna put Peer now as a wide out as he and Kissinger both go wide to the left. Everybody into the pattern, it's a quarterback draw to midfield and into Colgate territory at the 48. Domiancic makes the tackle after a gain of six. It'll bring up a fourth and four and I'm sure Bucknell is gonna go for it here. 10-40 and counting to go in the football game. Wanna thank all the sponsors this season who've been with us as they are the people who make our broadcast possible. Now the Bison will huddle up on fourth and four. They were gonna run it without a huddle. There's about 25 of them that have made it possible for me to bring you these games all season long and we thank them for it. Fourth down and four for the Bison. They need to get to the 43 of Colgate to keep the one alive. Colgate showing middle blitz. 
Long count, and now Bucknell's going to spend a timeout. They were trying to draw them off sides. We'll take the break with them. 10.05 to go, 48-7 Colgate. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. We do have some scores of other games now. in dem Gespräch mit der Dame aus der Schweiz, das Sie eben hörten, wird folgendes Zitat erwähnt. Wenn die göttlichen Weisungen verstanden werden, dann enthüllen sie die Grundlage der Brüderschaft, in der ein Gemüt nicht mit dem anderen im Streit liegt, sondern alle einen Geist, Gott, eine intelligente Quelle haben, in Übereinstimmung mit dem Befehl der Schrift, ein jeglicher sei gesinnt, wie Jesus Christus auch war. Der Mensch und sein Schöpfer stehen in der... Well, Bison take a time out and then all of a sudden run their punt team on and punt. Jesse Boyd caught the Brian Kramer punt, ran it back a couple of yards and it's first and 10 Colgate at the 23 yard line and the backup quarterback is finally in the ball game for the Red Raiders, and that is Matt Polycare, a 5'11", 193-pound junior who's been in six games this season. 5 of 11 for 85 yards passing, has rushed the ball eight times for nine yards. And that's about all we know about him, other than the fact he's got a clean uniform. He'll hand the ball back to a first-string running back who's breaking into the secondary, and that's Damon Smith, and he's a locomotive to the 50, to the 40, to the 30. He may have his chance at his 143 yards, and he's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. The snap of the ball came from about the 22 to the 25, so that's about 28 yards to midfield, and then another 25, so that'll be about a 53-yard run for Damon Smith. And my adding is a little bit wrong. We'll call it a 64-yard run for David Smith as Rob Marr corrects me, and that's going to help him get to the total. He had 80 coming in, and that may give him about three or four yards short. We're going to check that total. The snap of the ball went from the 22 down to the 25. Actually, I'm sorry, it's to the 15. I thought it was to the 25. The yard markers are obliterated. Now Polycare bobbles the snap. The ball is loose, and Ed Weiss will cover it. And we're going to settle on 62 yards, and that gives him 142, so he's a yard short of 1,000. We had written him off, and he broke the big one. And that goes with his two touchdowns. Wow. Down under nine minutes, and clock continues to run. Harvard continues to lead Yale 17-7 to with 10 and a half minutes to go. Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Illinois for the Ohio Valley spot in the playoffs, 0-0. That's very early in the first quarter. Youngstown State at home leads Western Illinois in the battle for the gateway spot. That's 14 to 10, although both teams should make it. They'll hand the ball to Smith. There's 1,000 yards, plowing inside the 15 to about the 12. That'll be a gain of eight more, and he's got his 1,000 with authority on that run. And it'll be third down coming up for Colgate and eight to go. And Villanova at the half trails by eight to Northeastern at home, 21 to 13. Number one, Michigan still leads Ohio State 20 to seven. And in the Patriot League, Fordham over Holy Cross 21 nothing, that's in the third. And Lafayette in the third leads Lehigh 28 to 14. Third down and eight for the Red Raiders. Polycare under center, hands the ball to Smith. Smith inside the 10, he'll get tripped up at about the seven. And Smith has been a tough guy to bring down this afternoon for the Bison. And the Red Raiders will not have the first down, so it'll be fourth and two. And more newcomers will come in the game. Randall Joseph is in the game. Also Lydell King in the game. And it's fourth and two from about the seven. They need to get to the five for the first down. Seven and a half minutes to go. Fresh backfield. Pollock here in front of King and Joseph. And they'll hand the ball to Joseph, the second back through, and he may get to the five. It'll be close. Bison defense going at it hard on that play. 
apologize for not giving tacklers that much, but it's been very difficult to see. That may have been Mark Imbertson and Wally Hurley that made the tackle, and it is not a first down, so the Bison stop the Red Raiders on downs and take over with 7-17 remaining in the fourth, down 48-7. And we'll see what the Bison can do here as they have the ball on their own seven yard line. Kissing her to the left, Kenny Schultz, and I guess it's O.J. Perkins going to the right side. Maybe Ronnie Rocket. Back to pass is McDowell in his own end zone, now scrambles to the right side, chased by Hicks, throws the ball to Rocket, makes a catch at the 25, gets to the 30, gets away from a tackler, out across the 40 to the 44. It'll be a gain of 37 yards for Ronnie Rocket. And the Bison have been able to go to him now today twice. One for 26, one for 37, and I believe had one that went for no gain. So it's his third catch of the day. And McDowell running without a huddle as we'll go under seven minutes. McDowell back to pass, four-man rush. It comes, flushes him out of the pocket. He'll run, 45-50. And he'll be tackled by Jamal Patterson at the 50-yard line, a scramble of seven. So the Bison continue to move. Colgate, with the most part, with their first-string defense in there. Although now we see a couple of more backups come in. Keith Brooks, a reserve cornerback, came in on that last play. The Red Raiders with their first-string secondary in there. First-string linebackers and first-string defensive line. They have won this one this afternoon decisively as they roll under six and a half minutes to go. Second down and three. Bobbled snap from center, ball loose. And let's see, Colgate says they have it and they do. And the Bison have committed their third turnover of the afternoon against none for Colgate. And November 22nd, 1977, excuse me, 1997 is a day that has been painted maroon and gray. As the Red Raiders recover the fumble on the botch snap from center and the Bucknell defense is back on the field. David Spicer, please call And the Bison are leaving their first string defense out on the field as well. There are absolutely no fresh jerseys on the field for the Bison. Polycare remains the quarterback. King and Joseph in the backfield. They'll hand the ball to the second back through. That's Joseph. He'll get about three or four. Getting close to the 45 yard line. Eric Green on the tackle for the Bison. Willie Hill at the bottom of the pile. Hill, I'm sure, with great consideration for the Defensive Player of the Year in the Patriot League. I would think that either Ryan Venna or Damon Smith or whomever, Dick Biddle for Colgate, will choose to nominate, will be the winner on the offensive side. Colgate with 2,000-yard rushers, first time in Patriot League history in 12 years. That's been done. Now Colgate bobbles a snap from center as the ball is probably getting a little soggy, tough to handle, but Colgate's Pollock here able to recover it, and it'll be no gain on the play for the Red Raiders. Five and a half minutes and counting to go. And while this has been a disappointing afternoon for the Bison, and we want to remind you that you're listening to the Bison Sports Network, WMLP Milton Lewisburg and WWPA in Williamsport, that it has been... Just an outstanding season. The Bison racking up 10 wins for the first time in school history. And bringing a lot of excitement in the game of football to the Lewisburg community. Third down and nine for Colgate. Polly Care will hand it to the deep back Joseph. Joseph inside the 45, close to the first down at the 40. And his extra effort, I think, is going to get it for him. Randall Joseph, who shook off tacklers a couple of times on that run. It's going to be very close, and now they're going to say that his knee is down at the 40, leaving him about a yard and a half short. Joseph, a 5'8", 190-pound freshman who rushed the ball 17 times coming into this game for 82 yards. The other award that will be decided next week will be Patriot League Coach of the Year. Dick Biddle won it last year with his team coming in second in the Patriot League. It'll be interesting to see, I would think, the major competition to Dick Biddle and Tom Gadd of Bucknell. Fourth and a yard, they'll go for it, they'll hand the ball off to Joseph, and he will lose yardage. There were two Bison that were right in his face. 
I think one of them may have been uh, Josh Lebrecht, and the other might have been uh, Wally Hurdley. And the Bison will make the play and get the ball back with 4 11 remaining. And the Bison will send the offense back. And again, we are just watching the string of time run out as Colgate has been the better team here this afternoon. And again, it was the Bison that got down inside the four with a first and goal on their first drive. Didn't score. And then it was the avalanche for Colgate. Swing pass to Chris Peer. Gets across the 45 to the 48. The officials will say that he was tackled inbounds and let the clock run with 40 seconds remain, excuse me, with four minutes remaining in the football game. Cal Wilcox back in for the Bison. Second down coming up for the Red Raiders. Again, basketball action tonight beginning at 5-10 on WVLY and WWPA. Second down and four. Schultz and Rocket to the left. On a quick count, McDowell will roll out, throw it to Schultz, overthrow him at the line of scrimmage or thereabouts. Flag is down and maybe somebody moved early for the Bison. Clock stops with 341 remaining. Illegal motion called against Bucknell and I would think Colgate might want to burn the down and bring up third down, we will see. They're discussing with the Colgate captain, Matt Domiancic. Actually, he's out of the game by now, so his replacement is in there. That's Kevin Fitzsimmons, who is making the decision, along with Teddy Hutchinson, a reserve safety. And I guess they decided they want the five yards after all. So it'll bring up second down and nine instead of third and four. So it'll be... Bucknell getting another down out of this. Schultz to the right. Rocket and Lima to the left. And again, McDowell has gone all the way at quarterback this afternoon. And it's not been a stellar day for him. 10 of 24 for 119. And now on the inside handoff, they'll give the ball to Peer. And that'll lose a couple, and it'll be third and 10. Colgate sniffed it out. And on the tackle, Matt Jacobs, a linebacker for the Red Raiders. Down to 320 and counting. Third and eight coming up for the Bison. They'll go without a huddle. Out of the shotgun, it's McDowell. He'll face a blitz. Steps up in the pocket and he will run. 40, 45, gets to midfield, dives for the first down. Great effort by McDowell. Fitzsimmons on the tackle for Colgate. And he'll get about 10 yards on the scramble as the rush was closing in. And the Bison get a first down to keep things alive here. McDowell this season took over in game number six and has started the last five and has really improved. He and Jim John were two quarterback system the first five games and really the Bison utilized that to perfection. A couple games John really played well as McDowell throws it incomplete on first and ten. In a couple games McDowell played very well. And the quarterback battle next season will be very interesting with McDowell battling against Jim John and Lucas Phillips. Second and 10 coming up for the Bison. O.J. Perkins into the game again for Colgate for Paul Lima. Second and 10 coming up for the Bison down under three minutes remaining. Colgate leading at 48 to seven. It looked like the Colgate defense forgot where the line of scrimmage was. They were lining up behind the ball. He couldn't see the ball in the mud. Second and 10, McDowell back to pass, has all day. Now pulls it down, great coverage by Colgate, nearly threw an interception. Threw it over on the sideline and it was nearly intercepted by Barry Hohair, a linebacker who was the only guy in that direction and he plays for Colgate. And now it'll be third down and 10 coming up for the Bison. Want to thank uh, all the people that have helped us on our football broadcast this season starting in the studio. We've had three different studio producers today and throughout most of the last part of the season, Trish Franklin, also Stefan Golder and Bud Snyder. Those three have worked with us this season. Also want to thank Rob Morrow's here today on stats. Today also Rick Lund with us as it's third and 10 for the Bison. McDowell back to pass. 
looking long left side and his duck is thrown and is it caught nope it's going to be trapped by rocket i think and now they're going to say he caught the ball a great salesman's job by ronnie rocket to the 26 i thought it one hopped but rocket will make his fourth catch of the day and that'll give bucknell a first down at the 26 yard line so it's first down bucknell also want to thank chris carlin brian gay and mike chico have been part of our crew this year as well and our video crew of mark willis and mark gazorla first and ten Ball thrown to Rocket, makes another catch, slips a tackle, gets forced out of bounds at the 11. And that'll be a gain of 14. So Rocket, padding his statistics here, doing a nice job late. 98 yards receiving, so he has 98 yards receiving in each of the two Colgate games the last two years. 225 remaining. It's Bison looking for their second touchdown of the game. Getting the play from the sidelines. Bucknell with the ball at the 13-yard line of Colgate. First team in there all the way for the Bison. And they'll go out of the shotgun again. And the ball on a bad snap is covered at the 15. A flag is down as well. And that was very reminiscent of the ball Bucknell lost in that big game against Lehigh when Wally Hurdley fell on it. Colgate is offside, so Bucknell will take the penalty in the five yards. And Bucknell will get a free first down over again as the ball looked like it never made it out between the legs of Neil Thompson. A couple Bison are wiping their arms against their jerseys to try to get mud off their hands. Jeff Bombick was wiping it off, I think, on Chris Peer. Minute 45 remaining. Colgate again going to claim their first Patriot League championship and go back to the playoffs for the first time since 83. McDowell throwing. Corner of the end zone, and the ball is going to be intercepted. No, and then dropped. It was in and out of the hands of freshman Mark Herman, incomplete. And the Bison will get a chance to do it again from the eight-yard line. Clock stops with a minute 34 remaining. Al Wilcox and Paul Lima back into the game. Great game, great season for the 20 seniors. Bucknell's going to have a big hole to fill next year with this senior class, especially deep when you look at the defensive line and the inside linebackers and strong safeties that triangle up the middle. McDowell under center on second and five from the eight. McDowell looking in the end zone. Now flushed out of the pocket and scrambles. He'll get to the seven and get tackled there. Fitzsimmons again on the tackle for Colgate. It'll be third down and four coming up with a minute 20 to go. And the Bison trying to put a little touchdown on the board to give him a little glimmer here. But the Red Raiders are going to represent the Patriot League this year in the Patriot League as the Patriot League's first representative at the NCAA tournament next week, maybe at Villanova. Third and four. 52 and counting to go in the game. McDowell left side. Timing pattern for Rocket or Perkins, and it's incomplete. Threw the ball at about the five, short of the goal line, and the ball fluttered away, and also getting bumped was uh, the receiver by Keith Brooks. So now it's fourth down at the seven yard line. Bucknell can get a first down at the four. And there's 47 seconds to go. That intended receiver was indeed Perkins. Rocket to the left. Kissinger to the right. Double tight ends, one back, that's Bombic. They need at least three and a half for a first down. McDowell, timing pattern, end zone to Rocket. Leaps, makes the catch for the score. Ronnie Rocket in for the score. It's 48 to 13, and Rocket with his sixth catch of the day. And Rocket has had a very good final drive. I believe he had 3 catches at least on that drive. McDowell throws his second touchdown pass of the game. And it's now 48 to 13, and Bucknell is going to send Ross Coleman out for the kick. And we'll see if the Bison will try the onside kick. Why not? 
McDowell to hold. High snap, McDowell puts this one down and Coleman does a nice job of kicking it through. Got a break in the action. We'll take our last game action timeout, 48-14 Colgate. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Director of Athletics at Bucknell University. At Bucknell, we're extraordinarily proud of our students and their accomplishments both in the classroom and on the field. Bucknell student athletes and coaches have continually been leaders both in the Patriot League and nationally in terms of competitive excellence at the Division I level. Our record of academic and athletic excellence is one that is unmatched by our peers in intercollegiate athletics. This past year, Bucknell student athletes once again captured the number one graduation rate among all student athletes in the nation. I would invite you to help our 26 varsity teams and over 700 student athletes by joining the Bison Club. The Bison Club allows our alumni, parents, friends, and fans to assist coaches and student athletes to continue the legacy of success that is Bucknell Athletics. The Bison go 11 plays, 59 yards, 339 remaining. And they've made this a 48-14 game. Coleman has the ball lined up on the diagonal, and it looks like we're indeed going to have that onside kick. Colgate has 10 men up around the midfield stripe. 42 seconds to go. 48-14 Colgate. And let's see if the Bison can get this onside kick here. And in the mud, it doesn't take the big bounce, and it doesn't go 10 yards. In fact, it's going to go minus one yard and out of bounds at the 34-yard line. It just rolled. It never came up. Very similar to the onside kick Lehigh tried. And in the mucky conditions, you're just not going to get the ball to tumble and bounce, kind of like it did in the SMU-TCU game on Thursday night when the ball bounced up in the air. But it didn't do it here today, and the Red Raiders are going to decline the penalty and take the ball. So we look at scores of other games. The uh, Michigan game is a little tighter with nine minutes to go in the game. Ohio State has scored another touchdown. It's 20 to 14 in favor of Michigan. Tennessee at number five. Leads Kentucky 38 to 21. And North Carolina has come back to what looks to be to route Duke 38 14. And now the Victory play as Colgate will take the kneel down as Matt Polycare is probably going to have to snap it one more time. There's 40 seconds left. And the Red Raiders are going to win the 1997 Patriot League Championship. And they're going to win it in a rout this afternoon, 48-14. to And again, you know, there's a lot of times one play that you say is a turning point. And the turning point in the game is Colgate is not going to have to snap it again. They're running on the field and diving in the mud. The turning point was when Bucknell did not score on their initial drive. The Bison had marched it down to a first and goal at the four and couldn't get anything, tried a short field goal, and the hold was botched by Don McDowell. Colgate stopped him and then in the end ran off four consecutive touchdowns and got out to a 27 to nothing lead. And the Red Raiders, as the clock says 0-0-0, will go to 7-4 on the season, 6-0 in the Patriot League. Bucknell finishes an excellent 10-1, but 5-1 in the Patriot League. And the Red Raiders again win it by the score of 48-14. We're going to be back with our post-game show after this. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. <laughs> 